Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, what is old is new again because the OG bloodline <laughs> is back and things are going to get a little bit oozy. Plus, WWE let some people go for going to Europe and did MVP do something that he was supposed to do in WWE before things went awry? Ladies and gentlemen, it's a slammed and jam-packed episode. King Ricky Kayfabe and a returning well from overseas is back for episode 393 of Kings of the Rings podcast exclusively here on Wrestle Addict Radio. And it starts right now. Midnight Music. What a freaking couple of weeks it's been in the world of wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King's Rings Podcast, episode number 393. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us uh, this week. If you like what you're watching, because we are live on Twitch, we are live on YouTube, we are, we're, we're, we're live on Facebook, um, because, you know, Twitter sucks. Uh, please like, share, sub- like, share, subscribe, leave oh, us five star <laughs> reviews, all of that stuff. The links are all of our things, including some of our fantastic merch is in the link below. We have a jam pack and somewhat of a speed episode, not WWE speed, because no one watched that at noon on Twitter at all. But we were going to we got a lot of stuff to go through and kind of a more condensed amount of time for right now. And none of that is going to involve the Yankees. Is it Will Tarashuk? Uh No, no. Uh, I was I, I watched game one at home. I missed game two because I was in the air. Thank God. Missed <laughs> game three because I couldn't watch it. I got I saw some of game four because I started coming back. And then I watched all of game five and had my heart broken. I again. stopped watching after the after that the buckle of a fifth inning. God. Can I I watched the whole World Series and I was like sad for you guys the whole time. Yeah, it was rough. It was it, it was, was bad. Rough. It was bad. After uh, I will, I'll say this. After after that fifth inning, I go, they fucking deserve to lose, and just turned it off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Judge doesn't make an error all year, and then he drops a routine fly ball because he's looking at first base. Yeah, I was like, that was, I was, uh, I was so mad, but uh, that's all. So I, so I it's, sign Soto, and then just <laughs> think about next year. It's football season right now. Okay, Fave, how are you? Hi. Um, my Chemical Romance is going back on tour, so I have found the will to live. <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> That's good. That's um, good. Take a win where you can yeah. get it. <laughs> Boris is Boris is high. He's squeaking his ball. Sorry. And no, I don't care. Oh, right. And yeah, let's get the show on the road. I have to go to work in an hour. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, like that is so weird. But they gave you a nine p.m. meeting. Well, we have people across like all different time zones. So they do like a daytime meeting and a nighttime meeting, to uh, be fair. Time zones, yeah. That that whole I, world is round thing, I get it. I'm trying to suck in as much non traumatizing uh OT as I can. Good luck. Once again, <laughs> I have a wedding to pay for. <laughs> good, good, good. So I'm gonna luck. go to these stupid meetings yes. at nighttime just to make money. Yes. All right. So let's get the show on the road. Last time you heard from myself and KFA, because Will, like I said, was overseas. Uh, we were talking about Crown Jewel. So Crown Jewel has come and gone. And to be honest with you, it's a quality event. Quality event. I mean, it was the the Crown Jewel belts are the biggest belts I've ever seen on a human being ever. Like it almost ate Liv Morgan. Yeah. It was a size of her yeah. torso. <laughs> yeah. Um, the matches for the Crown Jewel event were great. Cody and Gunther put on a great classic match. Um, somehow, anybody who does a sleeper hold does, forgets about the reversal roll-up. Like, it works, like, mm. eight times out of ten. They just forget to let go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just totally figure it out. I like the concept of the Crown Jewel. Um, I didn't understand why the belts couldn't leave Saudi Arabia. And then they explained about all the different jewels in the belt. I go, Oh, those are real. (laughs) That's why they're not going anywhere. So it's not like, okay. I said, it's not like Swarovski. Oh no, they, they took like, they took like Australian emeralds and put it in the belt. 
They're like, they're like, yeah, this is staying in WWE experience in Saudi Arabia, and everybody gets these champion. Everybody gets these like Super Bowl rings, essentially. I mean, the rings are pretty cool. Yeah, right. I, I mean, like the rings. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that makes sense though, right? Because if they're not going to be on TV and you're not going to use them, yeah, just leave them there. Yeah. I'm, just I'm leave them there. Like, 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 in, like, remember when Braun Strowman won the greatest Royal Rumble and he got a green belt and we <laughs> never saw it again? Not once. Yeah. So, like, if you next year you get to bring them out again, I think that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, keep them there. Why not? Yeah, it's like a better use of a dynamite diamond ring. Yeah, sure. Pretty, pretty much. It's, it's, that's what I can equate it to. I hope Cody got that ring off because when at the, like, in the post show, he was struggling. <laughs> big ring <laughs> but I, I i guess it was a, the ring the actual ring size a little bit small for his hand but he was also like gassed up from a match like he went from the match into a golf cart to this like ceremony yeah to the presser to and the presser hot as balls too yeah it, it was brad the other thing i want to bring up from crown jewel besides the the event was actually pretty solid um i feel like the women's match was the women's fatal four was wild from what i can recall uh, did anybody watch the after show presser? Did anybody think Seamus was like hung over? There was something wrong with him? Or was it just me? I like, I watched it passively. I honestly don't remember. Cause I was watching it with, uh, with our, with our big good friend, Sir Charles. And I looked at Seamus like, I don't think Seamus is in a good state of mind right now. Like he looked like he's about to <laughs> fall asleep and hung over. Like he just looked rough. Maybe he was, uh, jet lagged. <laughs> maybe maybe Who they knows? had been there for like um, for like what four or five days a week well, yeah. Yeah, nah, that's no excuse then uh i was just like this fuck watching this show so i fell asleep like halfway through but yeah i watched it listen it was it was a quality event uh everybody who was supposed to win you know won. you know obviously mm-hmm. uh bloodline 2.0 beat the og bloodline with a great haluva kicks like superman punch mistake mm-hmm or whatever it was. I was like, oh. Yeah, with, 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 with Sammy coming out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, no, it was good. It was pretty good. I don't know. The Bloodline things, I haven't been watching Raw and SmackDown. I haven't watched SmackDown at all. Or mm-hmm. really Raw since they left uh, Peacock, or not Peacock, Hulu. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So there's something else I'm looking in. is because the promo packages. I was like, with, I saw what they did with Jay. They had him scoot the IC title. I was like, ooh, this is a little, a I was, little shaky. I was it's, upset about that because I was just like. We gave him the belt for two weeks only for him to lose it again? Yeah, not only that, yeah. but like you, you spent so much time building him as an individual star, and he finally gets it just to go right back. Yeah, like right so, back to the storyline. Yeah, it was a little m- messy. I'll use the word messy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like what they're doing now with the integration of Sammy and Jay's whole thing is, hey, bro, I'm only here, but we're here as equals. Because Roman wants to put on his God mode heel persona, but Jay and Sammy are like keeping him in check. And Jimmy's just like, well, you know, uh, numbers, I guess. <laughs> so, so like in from that perspective, I'm like, okay, there's a little bit of wrinkle or some conflict here. Like, yeah. okay, it's a little more, it, who's that fifth man going to be? Um, like I think it's it's better. It's not a flop. It's it's better, and the match is going to be awesome. Listen, it's like we all knew hug. this was coming, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. There's it's a couple okay. of moments that brought that I think brought a lot of people back in. Obviously, the hug between Jimmy and Jay, which I think, Kay, you were there in mm-hmm. person for. I was. <laughs> and yeah, that's cool. Like that's fine. That, I thought that was great. Yeah. That's great. And then we have the moment from SmackDown with all of them putting the ones up in the air, like. Yeah. What a moment. That was really cool. What a moment. (laughs) Because Jay did it first. Jimmy's like, oh shit, me too. (laughs) And then it's like, it's like Sammy and Roman are arguing like without saying words and they'll look over like, oh, Mm fuck, fine. The best part about that, about that whole show spent before this end segment, which was great visual. Like this is a professional photo from one of WWE photographers is the opening segment. Sammy slipped right in into breaking all of them on camera. (laughs) (laughs) As he does. He was like, you know, I miss the old times when he like, you know, me and you. And I was like, I was, you know, Sammy Uso <laughs> and, you know, Jimmy and I would do the handshake. And you had Jay over there, you know, hater of the year. <laughs> hater, hater of the, of the year. year. Literally, I watched Jimmy like turn around because he because he started breaking. I was like, this is amazing. And so I, I like I like where they're going with this. Obviously, this is Bloodline War Games. I keep going back and forth about whether or not they need a fifth member because I was talking with, I think, Sir Charles again about this. He was like, there's going to be a fifth member. I go, I don't think it's needed. Like, you have your I four. Agree. I agree, yeah. too. Like, I'm totally cool with four and four, but uh, 
War Games is traditionally five, five on five. five. Yeah, and so yeah. Raw this past Raw yesterday at this point, since we're recording on Tuesday, yeah. they were looking. They were both looking for a fifth, and they both tried to recruit Seth, and Seth was like, "Nah, I'm out." I yeah. mean, uh, Sammy going to Seth. I was just like, "Ooh, not you." No, I I get it. I see it, but I don't want. I don't it want because- Seth involved at all. Yeah. Well, and that's the perfect it's thing. Like, Seth backed out. Yeah. But it's like you you do need a kind of a little more because like Roman was like like the Kevin Owens storyline, right? He's like Roman was so bad for so long. Now we're always going to forget that he was a, like a jackass for four years yeah. and a dictator. And that's Seth's point. You know, J- Jay can come over because it's family, right? Blood, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like end of the day, you're still family. Like that's a good, that's just good storytelling. Um, Sammy, it's kind of just like, you know, you Sammy, you could have played a little hard to get, all right? You could, you could have been that girl at the prom. And Seth is just like, I'm just not interested. So it's like, who's that fifth person going to be? Probably Cody, and I don't want that either. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's one of those things. I mean, I do like... Um, what they should do, what, what they should do, because who's Solo going to get also? Who's Solo going to get for his fifth? I don't, right? I don't like, know. I don't know, but what I have no idea either. What they could do is... They can't find anyone because Roman was such a dick and a piece of shit. Yeah. They go in 5v4. You could do that. Um, there have been talks that apparently another member of the Bloodline, Lance NOI, has been signed and has been signed for a while and has just been injured. Yeah. Um, so that screws because you can't debut another one without giving them a backstory at this point leading yeah. into war games. Yeah. I, I doubt The Rock will show up for one of the teams because The Rock has Red One that just came out and Moana 2. So he's definitely in Hollywood mode promoting both of those projects. Um, mm-hmm. and he's never he's never going to wrestle on something that's not WrestleMania. Yeah. He's just not going to yeah. do it. Rock's ego is too big to wrestle on Survivor <laughs> We learned his that ego, the hard his way. His ego is too big to show up <laughs> at his 25th anniversary, all right? <laughs> like, I still love The Rock, and I think the Final Boss character is great, but his ego is just, he thinks he thinks he's God. Like, come on now. Oh, you're the highest paid actor in the world for how many years running? So. I mean, he is kind of he is kind of like God, and it's, it's called <laughs> Spade guess. Spade here. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so there's that. I mean, I like how Seth refused. He refused Sammy. Then he refused uh, Solo. He goes, if I'm not going to be with the, he's like, I'm not going to join. If I'm not going to join Roman and his bloodline, I'm not going to join like someone who wants to be Roman. Yeah, yeah. Roman wanna be. Yeah, Roman wanna be. He's like, why would I do that? So I don't know who the spirit person is. Clearly not Randy Orton. He got pile dried, which I love that story. Of the return of the pile driver being an illegal I move. I do too, <laughs> but it was a weak pile driver. It was driver. a weak pile driver. Angles, just like you, okay, like you did a stretch a job for. A I mean, Randy's like driver. also pushing three hundred now. So like, yeah, true, true. You know. Randy played true. it well. He was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, the sound effects were killing me. I was like, oh, good the job, announcers, Randy. The announcers <laughs> played it really well too. Yeah, because they was, Michael Cole and Corey Graves like, sold it like fucking. Like, that's been illegal yeah. for that's years. A, Michael Cole's like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know who it is. I also want the Kevin is right t shirt. Yeah, that's a good just fucking shirt. Like outside of outside of like uh wrestling, people be like, Who, What? 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 <laughs> Who's Kevin? It's like a, you gotta go, they gotta, yeah, go, dude, home alone. <laughs> exactly. And then they'll You'll get know. It. You'll know. <laughs> You'll know. So, yeah, the bloodline thing is has to be figured out within the next three weeks or so because we've got Survivor Series War Games uh, coming from Vancouver. Moving on from that, when WD returned from a uh, couple, I guess, weeks or so after WD returned from Saudi, they said, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to do the Road to WrestleMania European tour with stops in Spain, Germany, Italy, Belgium, England, Scotland, Netherlands, Austria. And some of those stops are going to include SmackDown and Raw. Okay, so the road to so WWE is really taking this thing global. Um, obviously, by this time, Raw will be on Netflix, and it has been discussed uh, that Netflix is willing to stream Raw live when it goes overseas. So we might be getting a lot of afternoon Monday Night Raws and or a replay wow. in the states. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That, like- Switches up my day. <laughs> yeah, I can I can go to lunch and watch Raw at the same time. I, I do. I do. I, I, do work remo- work. I do work remotely on, on Mondays. <laughs> Mondays, I'm off. 
Yeah. Well, say what? Wait, so we're East Coast. The UK is what six hours ahead? About six, between like five, five to six, depending on where they are so, here. So, yeah. So the European countries they'll go to, but will be between five and seven hours. I would say so. Yes. Hours. Yeah. So yeah, they're starting at eight. So it's like two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Again, afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do for SmackDown. Obviously, that's still on the USA Network. There's also been discussions that apparently um, it is possible that Raw and SmackDown will both be three hours in the new year. Stop. I don't want that. It is a possibility. No. Nothing has been confirmed. So, you don't understand how happy I am with these two-hour Raws. Like, I'm going to bed at 10 o'clock. It's so nice. <laughs> I know, but it, it may not last long. Um, Netflix also has the man. I've heard Netflix also has the man. So they want Cody Punk and Roman on raw. Wow. <laughs> that's asking a lot. Yeah. Netflix needs to fucking relax. <laughs> is what they need to what do. What the fuck is SmackDown going to have then? Exactly. Netflix needs to relax. Um, but we'll, we will see what happens. And it may be for a few months, like Daquan is saying in our chat. Uh, but we will definitely see what occurs with that, especially with Raw and SmackDown going international again. I think SmackDown's first time doing international shows, I believe. Um, SmackDown? No, because no, cause when well when they, when they did the European tour like after WrestleMania. Oh, like, my fault. They have done it. In, they've had done it in England yeah, a couple of there times. There you go. They do it in England. Because uh, AJ... Smack, SmackDown goes to Canada, but I don't know if they... Um, no, they did Europe. They did England because uh, AJ... Beat gender in England on SmackDown for a Yeah, title. they definitely did yes. England. Yeah. SmackDown had a Japan taping in 05. That I don't remember. I was also not watching Me at either. that time. <laughs> Uh, I was. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. But yeah, Raw and SmackDown are going international on lo- as well as their Road to WrestleMania trip. So there is that. WWE kicked off a lot more announcements. Like the fact that last Friday they announced that Elimination Chamber is return is going out of the country yet again, except not Australia. This time it's going to be in Toronto, Saturday, March 1st. This should be the last PLE before WrestleMania in overpriced Las Vegas at the Rogers Center. The first time they've been at the Rogers Center since WrestleMania 18 icon versus icon. So yes, this is going to be in a wow. baseball arena. This is where they, <laughs> we sad ass blue Jays play. <laughs> um, so I'm interested to see what they do with this. Is the is the dome going to be open? Probably not because it's March in Toronto, Canada. Um, oh, it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold as fuck. Um, I'm, I've seen the setup of what they're looking for. Most of it is going to be in the infield. Um, okay. Most And then apparently from what I saw, because the seating chart isn't public, it's on, it's on on location. I saw they have a section called the stage. So I don't know if it's going to be like Elimination Chamber and like a rock concert. Like did they get Nickelback or something like that? Like out of the Ew. blue. Listen, Did say, they do that? say what you want about Nickelback. They actually do really well in the numbers, in, like in music history. You're allowed to like Nickelback. I, I didn't say I liked them. I said hating. they did well. I mean, well, yeah, they're, they're, they sell incredibly well. <laughs> yeah. They're like the fourth highest selling band of all, all time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really? disgusting. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. You need to look up Nickelback's numbers. Like as much as we shit on them, they do. They sell really well. I like hey. a few songs by Nickelback, but overall. They have they have like a ninety minute Netflix documentary on like hating Nickelback. It's, like, it's called like I hate Nickelback or something. It's just, it's just their story about how they started and like how they dealt with being hated and their fame being hated and then the pandemic and like it's it's actually a really good documentary. Ryan Reynolds is in it because he also loves Nickelback and he's Canadian. Well, yeah. So um, it's 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 worth the watch because Nickelback is yeah okay. they are an underappreciated band and they're really hated. Because it's trendy to hate them. It was trendy to hate them on the internet. It reminds me of a documentary ESPN. ESPN did a 30 for 30 about Christian Leitner. It's called I Hate Christian Leitner. I Hate Christian Leitner. <laughs> yeah. yep. And it was a documentary. Dude. It was a documentary about why you can hate Christian Leitner. My mom hates Christian Leitner. I also hate she Christian hates, Leitner, too. She hates Duke. <laughs> I hate Christian Leitner and Duke, too. Um, <laughs> but apparently he's a really nice guy. <laughs> I bet. I mean, I bet. He is, a mem- he is also a member of a 92 Dream Team. 50 million really? albums yes. sold. Yes. So at the time. Oh, right? 50 million. I told you. I told you. It's like what? With uh, 10 uh, million streams. Told you. A million is a million is platinum, right? I want to say so. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a I music, think but. so. Yeah. So yeah. They're the 11th. As of 2017, they are the 11th selling best, best selling band in history. Told you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> 11. The fuck? Told yeah. You. Right? <laughs> it's insane. Told you. <laughs> 
So yes, this is going to be another Canadian pay-per-view. You have Survivor Series in Vancouver. Next year is Elimination Chamber in Toronto, Saturday, March 1st. I guess happy birthday to me, right? But yeah, That's a happy totally. birthday to you. That is definitely a happy birthday to say. me. So we'll definitely see what happens as time gets closer. Uh, people who will not be at Elimination Chamber is sadly we have lost. WWE has released Indy Hartwell is gone. Former member of the way. Yes. With the hand, which Candace still held up during Aww. SmackDown during her match. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's respect to that. Yeah, That's former NXT champion. I feel like she never got a fair shot on the main roster. Didn't know what to do with her, uh, which kind of sucks. Uh, we are lose. We are also losing cute as a button Tegan Knox because Tegan Knox doesn't have great knees. I will just be honest Girl. with you. Uh, yeah, dude, she's got my dad's knees. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> It, it is a shame that she had a lot of problems. I thought she would have done really well, but she was just very, unfortunately, injury prone in her run. So we did lose uh, Tegan Knox, the girl with the shiniest wizard, but she's already doing bookings 90 days out from now. And last but not least, probably somebody who we will look at years down the road and be like, he wasn't actually that bad. Baron Corbin, after about 10 or 12 years in WWE, his career yeah. has gone to an end. A former United States champion, I want to say former Intercontinental champion. What we we money saw in Money in winner. the Bank winner, which went totally mm-hmm. awry. Um, we saw him win his only NXT title. Will at a yep. at Stand and Deliver. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, no, they they lost that. Oh, they lost. My fault. He had won it before. Yeah, they lost, yeah. but it was his best match ever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is a guy who, like I said, we'll look down. The, we'll look we'll look back at this years from now and be like, he was actually really fucking good. Like when you look at his, no, I'm, I'm going to look back on Baron Corbin. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. He, he had a yeah. good range of character. Corbin. Like he, mm-hmm. constable Corbin. Uh, I love when he went from happy, happy Corbin. Sad Corbin was even better. Sad. I sad loved Corbin was poor the best. Corbin. Yeah. <laughs> no, like the guy had range. Yeah. The, the guy had range and, um, he could have done more, but I think he was limited in wrestling on purpose, you know, because mm. he wrestled as an Applebee's like server. <laughs> um, I think it's also, I but, think it's because his snafu with the money in the bank and that whole backstage fiasco that yeah. Yeah. kind of put the kibosh on everything that was going to go well for him. But, you know, in recent years, he's had a stellar backstage reputation. Absolutely. Like, no one had anything bad to say about Baron Corbin. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I guess whatever happened back then, he grew up and moved past it, but. You know, he retired Kurt Angle. Let's not forget that either. And I did forget that and actually. Only one only one person has ever kicked out of the end of days. Drew McIntyre, WrestleMania 38. Was the first right. and only time yeah. anybody's kicked out of the end of days. I mean, that's wild. Yeah. I don't in, remember. That is in crazy. In modern day wrestling, mm-hmm. everyone kicks out of everything. Young Bucks are like, fuck, man. <laughs> we gotta hit it four times to get a two count. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things. And Baron Corbin was on record saying years ago, I'd rather have no one kick out of my finisher than to ever win yeah. a world title. And he got close. He, he, got, he close. got close. And to be fair, the, the his other move is the better finisher. Oh, deep six. Deep six deep is six. amazing. Deep, deep six is such a great move. And he makes it look really good. Mm-hmm. Deep six is pretty. So, I mean, I feel like this is not the last we are going to see a Baron Corbin. I, I doubt that. Not at all. I feel like he will have a major run on the Indies. I don't know if he'll go to AEW just yet. I would like to see him in uh, Impact in TNA. Honestly, dude, I think he's going to take his money and go home. He could do that too. I feel like I he has. I, I, I think what's what's he going to do in AEW? I don't. I don't think he goes. That's why I think he might do like Nothing. TNA. I mean, I, I don't think he. Well, he could go to TNA, but I mean, does he want to wrestle? I mean, he hasn't really. It's true. Does, I, mean, I, I, I could see him being like, you know what? I'm. I've, I did that. Done with my life. Let's move on to something else. Yeah, it also depends on how long he was in the NFL because he. I think he needs to serve uh, four years, four tenured years in the NFL to get that pension. So if he made that four year mark past the NFL, he automatically gets that NFL pension. So like, why would he yeah. do anything else? NFL careers don't last long. I, I knew that, but I didn't know. Really, I didn't know really had a pension. Yeah, neither did I. Is that when was that instated? It's part of our. I think that's part of our collective bargaining. How right, old like, is he? Is that relatively new? No, or is that like a new policy? Or no, it's not. It's been around, been around for, for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good on you. Good on you. NFL. Like if he like if he made it past the four year mark, he might. Yeah, I think he automatically gets a pension. So like to your it's case, well, it would be like, why would I want to do anything else? Exactly. I have my pension. I made my money doing something else that I like to do. Let me chill out. NFL. You know? Looked it up for me, but I believe it's four uh, years. He's 40 years old. Who, Corbin? Um, yeah, he's 40. 
Amateur, but maybe go back to boxing. <laughs> he was a Golden Globe person, I believe. His name he is was. Thomas Pestock. Yeah, I would have called him Baron Corbin too. <laughs> to be yeah, completely yeah. honest yeah. with you. Uh, Tommy offensive Pesto. lineman for the Colts and the Cardinals and the NFLs. What was the region quarterfinals and the Golden Gloves boxing? Yeah, Golden Gloves boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Let me. I'll get his ears. Hang on. Yeah. While you figure that out, okay, we're going to turn this to me and you. This is not going to be Incredible. your official beginning of of your new segment that will debut at some time and we'll plan it out. However, it's yes. going to be a great trial run. Goldberg. Be great. A couple of weeks boy. ago, Bill Goldberg was on College Game Day and announced officially that 2025 will be the year of his final wrestling match ever. Kay, I know you have already expressed that when Goldberg has his retirement match, Mance will be on the show, and I totally give the agreement Hell with yeah. that. Yep. Always Hell love yeah. to have Mance on for this, but I'm asking you directly, Kay. Who retires Bill Goldberg? You know what's funny? I don't know. What? Part of me thought Braun Breaker for like a while. They have matching tattoos. I got it, guys. I got it. Ooh, Chavo. <laughs> <laughs> and it was two years, by the way. Corbin was in the NFL for oh, two so years. He does, on the he does not uh, get yeah, it. He, he bounced around practice squads. Ironically, he was on the Cardinals and he got in a... Uh, a, a backstage scuffle throwing uppercuts. Yeah, he so. was a dick. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole Baron Corbin being a dick thing was not part of was not just character. He was literally a piece of shit. Yeah. So, but yeah, back to you, Kay. Who who uh, who retires? Bill Goldberg. I low key think it's either going to be Gunther or Braun Breaker. It's definitely going to be somebody that's like newer. Yeah. <laughs> I hope but it's Bret Hart. <laughs> a lot of people I, do. A lot of people My do. fantasy booking. I don't want to see that match, though. I want no, to absolutely think, not. My crazy booking is a fatal four-way between Gunther, Goldberg, Sami Zayn, and Bret Hart. Say that again? Fatal four-way between Bret Hart, Sami Zayn, Goldberg, and Gunther. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that... I mean, I think I think Gunther would be a good feud, yeah. but like Gunther's too technical. Bill Goldberg is just goes Bleh! and spears you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what if what if it's John Cena? <laughs> it's John Cena's last WrestleMania match and Bill Goldberg's retirement Stop match. It. <laughs> no, they would not do that. They would get their own separate flowers. Bill deserves better. I got a better one. It's never going to happen. Goldberg. It's <laughs> no, no. Goldberg Brock to WrestleMania 40, 20 years after the debacle at the oh, garden. Oh <laughs> my god. It's never happening. With Austin Brock as Goldberg with Austin as the special again. guest referee. <laughs> just um, just redo Eric, Eric Eric Bischoff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly don't know who retires Goldberg. I mean, Braun Breaker seems like the best. Like, Braun Breaker is just Goldberg, but faster. Yeah. yeah. I could see Braun Breaker, Gunther. Someone's, it's got to be someone. To, it's got to be someone meaty. The concept, Matt Riddle. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen Goldberg and Riddle, but that would have been God, a. God, <laughs> Matt Riddle. That would have been fun. That would have been a fight, actually. That would have been a real fight, though. It would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> if Dude, they resigned Matt Riddle. Resigned I, forgot, Matt Matt, Riddle. I forgot Matt Riddle existed. Yeah, it's not a good look. Me too. <laughs> I think if they re-sign Matt Riddle in the next year, it'll be Matt Riddle, and they'll, like, kill each other. I doubt they'll re-sign Riddle. Man's too much of a liability. But again, Marty Scroll still got work somehow. What's he doing now? I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll tell you later. But, yeah, Bill Goldberg up in the air. He will be retiring uh, within the near future. But finally, folks, we can rejoice. <laughs> I can stop bitching. For us for now at what six or so years? Because the mm -hmm. women finally have a mid card championship. Thank God. Yes, it is the women's United States Championship. It's literally just a US title in white, which by the way, looks absolutely fucking gorgeous. If you're looking at this on the screen right now, Nick Aldis revealed it on SmackDown. Um, this is like I said, it's the women's mid card title. Finally, 
they they pulled the plug on this. You obviously had the NXT North American Women's Championship, which debuted at WrestleMania this past year. So about six or so, six or seven months later, we revealed this for the main roster. AEW has had women's mid card title with the TBS Championship for a couple of years. So a lot of legwork has been done by other brands for this to happen. Um, and like the Quan said, it is a good idea. I think it's a great idea. We finally get women to do something outside of the world title and a tag title scene. My only issue is that it's just a parody of the men's and I get what they're going with that, but I really want the women to have something that's unique to them. Like for instance, AEW, even though I don't like the names of their TV stations has a TNT title and a TBS title. So there is, well, they're rumored to do the Netflix championship. I heard, I saw that going oh, around. Gotta be I, fucking I, kidding me. I swear to God, do not <laughs> do not. I'd rather have them with the speed championship. Um, but yeah, my only issue is that it's it's the women's US, just a parody of the men's, but I want something that's unique to them so, so that they kind of stand out. But I get why they're doing it. I feel like it. WWE's not ready to do that. I know. Mo- I know. Most of the shit the women get is the women's version of a men's thing. Yeah. And I, I understand the concept of it. I just wish that it, there'd be something like they have women's evolution championship right there. I think that stands on its own. Yeah. You know, or even do like women's television title. It's also right there too. But who knows? I just feel like they don't care about evolution. Well, clearly because they've only had one of them. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think okay, unpopular opinion here. Go ahead. Uh this belt this belt is about two years too late. They should have done this instead of the tag belts because mm. they already have these women's tag team belts that pretty much mean nothing and they try they're trying with Bianca and Jade the matches have been not- good the crown champ the crown jewel match was really good was- yeah. yeah it was it, it was i watched it back and it was really good like and they are trying but there's this is going to sound crazy to say there's not enough tv time and there's not enough women like who's going to be fighting for this belt if they Honestly, treat it Naomi Naomi and who Chelsea Green uh okay Piper Niven. Piper, Shayna, Zoe. Uh, Natalia. Daddy, uh, I can Daddy see Deville. Natalia being one. It, it depends on one if they debut Meechin as well. She's also a high one. Um, <laughs> I, I have a really, really horrible feeling. Well, I'll get to that in a second. I have a feeling this, if this is the only title that they're going to, they're going to debut for the women in the mid card, this is going to be cross promotional. So that kind of ups. I mean, that's a, that's a better idea, yeah. right? Have them everywhere. Like it's just, it's there's it's a little bit of an AEW effect too, where there's there's too there's too many belts, mm-hmm. and they can kind of not enough people going after them. Like if they, if they were getting rid of the U the, the tag belts for the women and putting in this belt in, great, great, because mm-hmm. Bianca and Jade are gonna fucking tear this division apart yeah. fighting for that mm-hmm. belt, right? But they're not. It's a little oversaturated, and everyone's excited now mm-hmm. and wait it's a it's a delicious looking belt i'd fucking buy that belt yeah. it's way better than the other one like it's gorgeous. just on strap alone and like it's surprising what like color chains on the strap can do for a belt yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um but you know a little warning to the uh ice iwc here uh don't get your hopes up too high mm-hmm. because you're gonna be disappointed you're probably gonna get angry and you're gonna shit all over it and making it even harder for them to get over so it's I'm ex- like yeah I think it's great on paper but it's it's too hard to get done in practice because of all the other all the other TV team we got to go okay okay so let's even have this belt right on it's on SmackDown they announced it on SmackDown they announced it on SmackDown there's no there's no indication yet that Adam Pierce will debut a new belt or if this is going to go yep. across both brands Cor- uh, Corey and Cole insinuated that it's both going to be on Raw and SmackDown. So that's good. But, that's, yeah. that's 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 a good step in the right direction. But okay, so yeah. you're having this new thing, right? Mm-hmm. You gotta dedicate TV time to it. Yeah. But that means you have to take TV time away from something else. Correct. So what on SmackDown do you take away from the the men's tag division with with, with Champa and the Street Profits and all that? Is kind of motor uh, motors, or, motor city machine guns too. Yep, and they're brand new. So you gotta you gotta you gotta budget in the TV time. You between you gotta take away from something. Do you take away from Nair because you replace women with women? Do you take away from the tag belts? Like do the tag belts stay on Raw and this stays on SmackDown? You can have that kind of division that way. Like how, what what do you do if you're Triple H head of creative? You, you want to add something new and great and advanced women? Great, but that means you gotta take something away. Mm-hmm. What do you take away? 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know the, the answer, answer. That's either. Open the question. I think if if it is true that Raw and SmackDown or at least Raw moves up to three hours, that could solve a lot of issues. Because now you I you add extra going time. To be what, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be what they find to be the solution. They don't want to take away from men. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. So when they get the extra hour for Raw and SmackDown in January, they're going to use that to focus more on women. Yeah. The full hour, not of course, not for women, but. Some more time. Yeah. The the other question yeah, is, we I don't know when you it's. Could, I think you could. I think you could dedicate a full hour of a three hour show to women. But you know, it's but they it's, won't. It's, it's not an hour straight. You know, it's fixed twenty minute opening segment, ten minute match. Yeah, yeah. Of course. When you segmented, show, right? yeah. If you. I think they totally could. But well, honestly, it it comes down to what Triple H said in that press conference last time we had a show. Yeah. You know, it's about green. It's about making money. It's what gets over and what works. At least how yeah. in this case. Probably how it should be. Now, granted, that message didn't come across that great how he said it. Absolutely but, not. You know, when, when you're fighting for TV time, that is what you should strive for. Yeah. What is working? What is good for business? What is getting over? And that is who should get TV time. Yeah, but it's also like, so with this new belt, they're going to have to highlight the belt, like you said. And the other thing yeah. is that you're going to have to, you want to make this initial battle for this belt means something like when they debuted the women's north american championship they had a freaking six person ladder match you had qualifying matches yeah. six person ladder match yep. it went over fantastically it set it set the bar really well and it was a fantastic match so you have to do something similar for that for the women whether it's a tournament or something or whether you highlight it at like a upcoming ple which the only one would be left is survivor series maybe even the rumble at um, which I don't think you should do at the Rumble at all. I think it'll get lost in the sauce. Um, so it's a matter of when they debut this belt, when this belt actually becomes up for grabs. Like right now we just have a debut and we don't know what's going to yeah, happen. It's announced. My fear, my fear and my trolling, my trolling jovialness thinks Charlotte Flair will just win it when she comes back. Probably, <laughs> honestly. Just going to pull Charlotte Flair back to win this title. I mean, Charlotte it's not, ca- it's not called a WWE Goldberg. royalty championship. Okay? Like, I mean, I, I think they could have also done with a different name. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Like, like, cause it's, it's the women's U S championship. Well, the men's are going to be called the U S championship. Right. Yes. So it's something to kind of distinguish, um, a title that's specifically for the women, but yeah. what would you call it? You know, the Inter- intercontinental is available. <laughs> I, like I said, I liked evolution. <laughs> I like the evolution championship. The Evolution Championship, yeah. yeah, I think that could have worked too. Like to give something that's inherently theirs only the women. Yes, exactly. It's, so it's 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 a title belt. It's not a women's title belt. Correct. Yeah. So that's exactly. I mean, it's 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 something people want. It's something we've been clamoring for, and it could be good. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I get to. I hope I, like six months on the line, came over and shove my words in my face. <laughs> but I'm ca- I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I I think if they want to do well with this, it's two people who I think could run wild with this. Uh, Meechin for in for in ring work, Mia Yim, or my number yeah. one pick, Chelsea Green would run circles with this belt. Being can be Cana- being Canadian be and fun. winning the first ever women's United States Championship, she has so much material for days. And Chelsea Green mm-hmm. has done such amazing work for everybody else except for herself, and she needs to be rewarded for all the stuff that she's done. Like her money in the bank was phenomenal. Her moment at in Saudi a crowd jewel when she's like. Am I going to jump from the top rope? No, no. And she keeps going down the ring (laughs) (laughs) and just jumps. Like I I would give her this belt and have her run absolutely wild with this, but we'll see what happens when this debuts and how they, how they set this up. But let's move along Uh, all in Saturday, July 12th. They have just announced that early in December tickets will go on sale. We're going to do this one real quick. How expensive will this be compared to WrestleMania? Will Tara shock. Ah, dude. Oh, how expensive will it be? Oh, you mean the, 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 price. the tickets? Yeah, ticket price. Yeah. Okay. Um, Not production expense. So I don't care about that. Yeah. I'm like, how much is going to cost AEW? <laughs> I don't I was like, care. Oh, yeah, that's me to my mind. That's where my mind went. Um, it, it depends how they, are they doing the same? Is it, is it still Ticketmaster? I want to say yes. So like it, that depends. If it's the same ticketing program as it did for uh, WrestleMania, there'll probably be a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Um. Like what? Like it was like what's it like? Uh, ringside seats for what? Like five grand or something like that. Try like ten. Ten grand. And maybe so I could yeah. see ring. Mm-hmm. I could see ringside seats for all in Texas being like twelve hundred or two thousand. Fair enough. Right. Damn. Um. Nosebleeds, forty bucks. Right. Somewhere between there. Yeah. And then everything else is just in the middle. So if like for seats we would typically buy like middle bowl, club level, or lower bowl, um, 
Probably about two, three hundred. I'm give or take. tempted if SummerSlam wasn't the next month. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> I'm so like if, if SummerSlam was in Minneapolis or uh, wherever else was, I'd be, be like, dude, let's go to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, I've always wanted because Dallas you, sounds you, like a fun up, trip. It is. Yeah, Ricky, you've talked up Dallas so high. I've been it's twice. Like, All right, I'll go. I'd go just because it's Dallas. I think mean, it's all Dude, I have to go the for the barbecue. Like, wrestling is a secondary show. Yeah. Dallas is the main the show. Food I like barbecue. love. Can I say something controversially at Brief? <laughs> yes. I feel like you should go to Dallas instead of SummerSlam if you have to like pick one. I'm not. But SummerSlam like, is get... so close. It is it close, is. but like all in, like you get a whole trip out of it. Like, yeah. Dallas is a great town. Like, well, I feel like you'd go to Dallas and be like, I want to move here. There's so much space. You would love it. You know, I was I was hoping to say that about Austin, and, and I didn't. Not even <laughs> well, close. Well, Austin's the you state capital like and a and a college town, so. It's not that I didn't like Austin. It's just it didn't feel like home. Gotcha. That's bad. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Like, it was good to visit. It was good to be there for a weekend. I'd do a week in Austin, but I was like. Yeah, I don't, I don't get what Rogan's talking about. That everyone loves living here. Like, I, just, I don't see it. Cost, My cost living is great. To Austin, and she loves it. Yeah, I know yeah. people who moved to Austin and also Dallas and enjoy the fuck out of it. Yeah. So, but hey, all in Texas, have like I said, if SummerSlam wasn't in our backyard, I'd be like, yo, let's go to Dallas and have a ball and eat a bunch of great barbecue. Mm-hmm. So, because I know, I know the good ones. I have some friends who live down there. Uh, but moving on, still with the AEW thing. Ladies and gentlemen, business is back. MVP has resurrected the Hurt Business, bringing Bobby Lashley, Shelton Benjamin, uh, back to AEW under a new name called the Hurt Syndicate, which, to be honest with you, so much better of a name for for wrestling standpoint. Syndicate over business. Uh, What they have been doing, it seems like it's what MVP wanted to do in WWE until they got steamrolled by this thing called the pandemic and the bloodline, which is literally just a hurt business, but Samoan. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) What they've been doing is something that actually has, has me intrigued in AEW. They have been going to all of these different performers, mostly POCs. They went to Mercedes. They went to, um, they went to, I think they went to private party. They went to Ricochet. Uh, they've gone to Leo Rush and MVP has just slipped in their card. Like when you want to get serious about your craft, you know, you come talk to me. They went to um, the acclaimed and it was like, you guys are a joke. They're like, you guys, wow. <laughs> they're like, you can be much more serious. They went to Anthony Bones. He, MVP literally approached Anthony Bones. He's like, your father's a Super Bowl champion and you're out here talking about balls and scissoring. Stop. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you can be so much bigger than what you are right now. Do you want to do that? If so, you have my card. Come talk to me. Um, yeah. I love what they're doing. It's a thing with the Hurt Business is that the Hurt Business, people appreciated them, and then they didn't appreciate them. And then they, when they were gone, people were like, we want them back. And then we never got them back. You know? Um, but now they're back. They seem to have a little bit more creative freedom. Essentially, what MVP was saying is he wants to give, you know, underused talent a chance, kind of like what they did with the Judgment Day. Um with a specific group of people. And I'm interested to see how big they get. Leo rush also did a cut of promo being like, Hey Bobby, remember me? Like, you know, I still remember when I was like your spokesman. Like I, I, I Mm -hmm. might get the, I might call this card and, and join up. And I just like what they're doing with this. I think this has the potential to be something absolutely spectacular, but will, what are your thoughts on the hurt syndicate name? Um, I like the idea. Yeah. Like, let's just do the hurt business, but better. Yeah. I think they could have had a new name. It's like, I like syndicate. Like, I like syndicate. I do it's too. Like, it's like with the hurt syndicate, it's like, okay, you're just not, it's like, you, can you knock off yourself? Like, is it, can you be a knockoff of yourself? I feel like you possible? can rebrand. Wouldn't it, would this, would, rebrand, would this be a yeah. rebrand? But I guess you know, I, it is, it is, it is a rebrand, but it's like, you know, going from the boss to the CEO for Mercedes, is this like, Okay, you want to do the same thing but with a fresh coat of paint? It's like, well, why not just do something new, for lack of a better but I term? I feel like you, if you're going, if you're trying to get WWE fans to watch your product and they don't know who any of these fucking people are, you need to have something similar yet different to bring in those viewers. Uh-huh. I like Hurt Syndicate. It's snappy, but I, I feel like it sounds like more elevated than the Hurt business. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, also, also to play... Uh, 
what's going to matter more is what they do as opposed to what they're named. Yeah. And what, mm-hmm. what they do and how they do it, I think is going to be way more impressive and better potentially than what they did in WWE. I mean, it all depends what they do, right? Is, is the focus of AEW to boost the group or is like what WWE did was to boost Bobby Lashley. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and I think the focus and is to boost th- the group in AEW. And I think the focus is to boost the group. I agree. Yeah. Cause MVP didn't get to do what he really wanted to do, even though it still kind of worked. So it didn't work as well, well as it was supposed to because of upper things yeah. got away. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe like you can't call the hurt business a failure. Like, no, any, you can't. Any way, I was not at all. I was a big hurt business yeah. fan for a while. Yeah, I know you. I know you were. <laughs> but like this, but this one, I think the hurt syndicate has the potential to be way better. Yeah, absolutely. They still rock really so, good suits yeah. too. I'm like, God, they were. Really yeah. Strong. So 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 you know, ask me, ask me in six months if these guys are still on TV. If I think the hurt syndicate was a good name or not. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause it's like you know, like like I mean, when people want to start a business, or whatever. Like, what should I name it? The name should be important. I'm like, dude, the name is the last thing that matters. You know, Nike is only a good name because the business is successful. Yeah, and they just did it. Right? <laughs> yeah. So and they just did it. Yeah. <laughs> the more interesting thing about the hurt syndicate um, is that. You need to. I know you're not on social media that much, but follow follow Bobby Lashley's social media these days. You want to know what Bobby's thing is now? Mm-hmm. So Bobby Lashley's social media is that he 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 travels the states and stuff looking for the best cheeseburger. Oh, <laughs> oh! I think you told me about that. Yeah, that's his social that. media now. That <laughs> that's good for him, dude. He looks so, you ever see, because so, Will and I have seen Bobby Lashley in person at the airport in New Orleans when he came back to WWE. It's a big guy. Imagine oh, that yeah. big guy so happy eating a cheeseburger like once a week. That sounds fun. <laughs> it's it's great. Um, So. Dude, like, he, he just goes around going to different five guys. Like, wow, the five guys is even good here. <laughs> I mean, I, I did, I did have, I know typically when I travel overseas, I never eat McDonald's, but I was in the airport and on the way to go home. And I was like, I saw my, I walked in the airport. The first thing I saw was the golden arches. And I was like, that's a sign. That's a sign enough for me. So I, I went and had McDonald's and God damn, I wish I didn't. Cause it was way better. <laughs> I, can think, yeah. I don't think I can ever have American McDonald's again. Yeah, Overseas McDonald's is interesting stuff, depending on where you are and yeah, what you get. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's good. It's actually like burger. It's actual meat. Yeah. It's awesome. So. Big ups to the Hurt Syndicate. Hopefully, do well. to me. It's the most interesting storyline in AEW outside of John Moxley's Death Rider taking over AEW, which is literally just the NWO hostile takeover from twenty years ago. Um, freaking Darby Allen came down from the rafters one dynamite like a couple weeks ago, just like Sting, except in a <laughs> pink fur coat, like a freaking buffoon. <laughs> and that was the middle of the show. I was like, all right, okay, all right. Booking is kind of weird still, but. Shit happens when you party naked over an AEW. Moving on, folks. WWE ID. Well, I don't think we got a chance to talk about this, but I, I'm I don't know if you're aware of WWE ID and what it is. Um, are you before? I've heard. Yeah, no, I, a little, a little bit. It's like their new performance center. It's like the new developmental system. Or what was what was that college thing they tried doing NIL. a year or two ago? At NIL is it? It's new, is it like pretty much a rebrand version of that? No, it's not. So pretty much what it is is that WWE ID is called independent development. So essentially, it's saying, hey, remember when we said we're never going back to the Indies? We're just doing NIL. Hey, we're going back to the Indies. <laughs> oh, that's that. That's right. They're that they're using it to like. No, I I do know about this because uh, Zarian and Rich talked about it on. Yeah, Batman. it's pretty, um, they're like they're pretty they're pretty much like funding the Indies to an extent. Kind of. So what essentially what they're doing is that they're. They are n- naming a couple of people, several people, WWD prospects, and they'll follow yeah. their career through the Indies. They'll highlight their matches. They'll give them a lot of, I guess, like more personalized coaching. From what I've heard, yeah. they're not going to stop them from taking specific bookings, a la meaning if they get booked in AEW, they'll say, hey, do AEW. You know, yeah. but they're just following them. And then they've also. Yeah, go, 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 go get over it. Yeah, me. exactly. And then what else? They're, the other thing they're doing is that they're naming specific schools WWE ID schools, which includes Cody's Nightmare Factory, Seth Rollins Booker's. School, um, yep. I think a, Booker, T's. Booker T's Reality of Wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, Rikishi School in LA, I and mean, there's another school in yep. the Northeast as well. Those are the five WWE ID schools now. Um, no, it's smart. Yeah. This is very smart business for them. And it's it's good for the indies, too, because yeah. they can promote that, hey, we have a WWE prospect exactly. at our show. Mm-hmm. You know, bump the tickets up twenty dollars, and then the boys get paid. Everybody wins. It's gonna and the and the girls. I think it's Everybody gonna wins. reinvigorate the indies, which is good. Yeah, because WWE needs that. I mean, WWE has had this has always had the problem of like, where is our next guy gonna come from? Where is the next star gonna mm-hmm. come from? 
and it was people who were already established through the indies. Now they're like, okay, let's kind of steer this boat a little bit and drive the people who we see early on, kind of give them some guidance, bring them in NXT, which is our real developmental. Exactly. And then give them, it's, it, it, it creates a more clear path. Yes. From the indies independent wrestler to get. Yes. Yeah. So now you have two ways of getting the WWE. You can be a standout college athlete or yep. you can be an independent wrestler. And it's, to be honest with you, it's what WWE has been doing for years. They're just blatant about it now. Yeah, there's a little more. Triple H is just like, let's just let's just tell everybody what we're doing. Let's just, let, yeah, let's just show let's just show our hand and get good PR from exactly. it. Exactly. So it is. It's good. So. William Regal's pretty much ahead of this. He's already handed out some stuff to some people at, at shows. William Regal was scouting like this when he was in NXT the first time around. So this is nothing new. They're just they're yeah. just putting a brand in. I love it. I like the idea they have their own social media page. And what we're going to do right now is go through the list of the initial WWE ID prospects uh, from their social media page, wh- who they are, where they're from, how long they've been wrestling, and uh, this, where they were scouted from. So the first one, Zeta Steel, the real deal Zeta Steel, debuted in 2022, finishing move as the Unprettier, scouted from Washington, nice. D.C., from uh, scouted from CZW, yes, that CZW. Oh, <laughs> yes. Next on the list is Bryce Donovan, uh, scouted from Wrestling Open. He's uh, he debuted in 2018. His finisher is the Damocles, which is a Death Valley Driver elbow drop. And K, he is from Long Beach, Long Island, New York. Wait, I knew that name sounded familiar. Mm-hmm. He's a creative pro person what's this guy's name bryce donovan he i saw a video of him he's massive put it put it this way well he's what big cast should have been mm. he <laughs> gives me josh briggs vibes kind of he looks like a, he's like look at yeah. him yeah yeah looks like josh briggs when he was le- before he broke his oh i've leg, seen this guy on the internet yeah he, he's, he he's a local long island talent uh this man here Wins the best name of any of the WWID prospects. We have oh, is this Cold Cappuccino Brew Jones? Cappuccino Jones? Okay, That's the best name I've ever Debuted heard in, in my 20 whole life. Cappuccino Jones. Yes. I love it. I want to. Can I name my kid Cappuccino Jones? Yes. Cold Brew Cappuccino Jones debuted in 2022. His finisher is the Froggy Brew, also known as the Decaffeinator. He is from <laughs> he is from Coffeyville, Kansas. This man wow. wins marketing. <laughs> okay. Coffeeville, Kansas, scouted from This Is Wrestling. Moving up the list, we have um, Cartwheel Jack Summit debuting in 2019. His finisher is a Twisting Star Press. He was scouted from Game Changer Wrestling and is from Sacramento, California. Moving up. That's how Taz orders Starbucks. Nice at the caffeinator. Um, <laughs> we have Zara Zakar. She is she de- the the petite powerhouse. Zara Zakar. I saw videos of her. She looks amazing. Debuted in 2023. Her finisher is known as the Control Z. She was scouted from Millennium yeah. Pro. Yeah, I know. That's good too. She's scouted That's from good. Millennium That's Pro good. Wrestling. Her hometown is San Diego. California. His next prospect is called Sean Legacy, debuting in 2017. His finisher is known as the Shambles, uh, which is also just a 450 splash. He was scouted from Pro Wrestling Revolution Noah from a Pro Wrestling Revolution Noah tryout. His hometown is Augusta, Georgia. Our next prospect is Sam Hardway Halloway. Uh, scouted from International Wrestling Cartel, a.k.a. the IWC, um, hometown of Akron, Ohio, debuted in 2022. His finisher is a choke bomb, so which is a choke slam bomb. Uh, next, we have, what is his name? Oh, Philly's Finest, Marcus Mathers, debuting in 2019. His finisher is a 450 splash. He is also scouted from Game Changer Wrestling and is from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And last but not least, uh, the real life action figure, It's Gall, debuting in 2020. His finisher is a striations bomb. He is scouted from Wrestling Open, and his hometown is literally Mount Olympus. So, those are your initial. Actually. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I fuck with it. Actually, there is somebody that they debuted that's. That's actually new that I did not get to today. So this last one, we don't have a card for. Is, is it terrorizing? Yes. 
Not. Dude, the memes that Fretz has been posting <laughs> for the prospect our, cards, Discord, <laughs> for the prospect cards, yeah, they were all really funny. Like it was like it was like our Sergeant Jones, whatever from SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. <laughs> yeah. I think I was the only one who got that record. I got the Baron Blade one. The Baron Blade one was fantastic. The Baron Blade one, was- yeah, Fretz. So tip of my cap to you, my friend. That was excellent. So there's somebody else that was just named uh, a little less than a day ago. His is he is no his name is the Ice Williams, the coldest wrestler on the planet, debuting in 2018. His <laughs> you mean Glacier? No, no, no. <laughs> um, debuting in 2018, his finisher is known as the Icebreaker, also known as the Frostbite. He is from Long Beach, California. He was scouted from Future Stars of Wrestling. So that was the latest person that was debuting in uh, WWE ID, as I can see on their social media page right now. So it's a, close to about 10 individuals so far. Uh, I'm interested to see what they do with this. But those are your initial WWE ID prospects with probably much more to come. Any initial thoughts, Kayfabe? Um, I'm just going to say right now, if they squander the, any opportunities with Cappuccino Jones, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Cappuccino Jones will make me actually drink coffee for once. I fucking, I'm a ride or die. Like, I want Cappuccino Jones to get so big, Starbucks names a drink after him. Cold, what is he, cold brew Cappuccino Jones? Just call it the Cappuccino Jones. Those are two different drinks. No, don't do the cold brew, just call him the Cappuccino Jones. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. Yeah. You're telling me if he got big enough, the Cappuccino Jones wouldn't sell out like every Starbucks. Um, I mean, how would you make it different besides just being a cappuccino? I'm not a coffee person, Kay. That's that's, that's your that's is that my yeah, expertise. That's your expertise. I don't drink coffee, so I guess it depends on what his gimmick is. <laughs> Wait, Taquan saying he's seen his indie matches. His entrance is coffee shop jazz. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? His entrance music is coffee shop jazz. I'm sold already. <laughs> I am sold already on this. I like I said, we we both mentioned we love we like the WID prospect. Hopefully they get a YouTube page. Is what I think they need is a YouTube page or something like that where you can like actually watch some of these guys' videos mm-hmm. and see what they do with it. That would be cool. Yeah, I think it'd be a cool thing to do. And if it's if uh, Bryce Donovan is like wrestling in the area, I definitely want to go see him. We should go. Yeah, definitely want to go see him. He's probably going to be in the audience because he is a creative pro person. So. He, he is going to be there, so probably at some point. Uh, but anyway, folks, oh, good. We made it in good time. That is our show this week. Uh, we might, if if we, we'll talk about it off here, but we might go to a seven Eastern format instead of like an eight. If that works out better for everybody. I like that. Yeah, no, it worked, it worked for me. Yeah. Um, I get home from work around like 4.35 typically, and then we just, Jazz and I cooked an early dinner, and then yeah. here we are. Yeah, we can figure it out. We'll we'll, we'll definitely toil, toodle with uh, toil with this and see what happens from here. But yeah, that is our whole show. And we can definitely do it. We can definitely. Well, Ricky, you and I can hang out and do a post show. That's <laughs> true. We can actually hang out and do a post show. Yeah, because no. usually it's just like, dude, I'm gassed. <laughs> yeah. So now we now we can hang out, talk some shit, and um, I don't even know what to talk about. I, we, I don't want to talk about the Yankees. I, I, I don't, don't want, want to either. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't want. I'm to. so disgusted by how it ended. I was like, this is horrible. <laughs> I it was, was like, pathetic. wow, Sorry I was like, to say. wow, this is what it feels like to be a Red Sox fan. <laughs> this is what it feels like to be a Mets fan. I, like, I felt more Mets. Like, this Yo, how the Mets felt? I would like to point out, I believe in my fucking spirit with how the Yankees played. If the Mets were able to beat the Dodgers, the Mets would have won the world fucking series. You might and I'm be so right. sad about it. Dodgers, you might yeah, be that's right. Why did, that's, why I didn't want, that's why I didn't want to play the Mets. Yeah, me too. I'd rather, I'd rather be embarrassed by the best team in baseball than the you fucking bets. Mets. <laughs> so. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't live that down for years living there. I might have to move states. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But who? I love the Mets. Uh, you're the only one. <laughs> The, uh, I, I bought like City, I like City Field. City Field is fucking Claus awesome. So I'll give you that one. Is bringing Boris a Mets hoodie for Christmas. Oh yeah, amazing. Oh yeah, you're not amazing. gonna get, you're not gonna give him yeah. like a grimace doll. If I find one, I absolutely would. Only the Mets <laughs> could Grimace reject Claus. their own mascot for another IP. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wrote this. <laughs> I caught the Grimace 7 train. Only the Mets can reject their own mascot for another IP character. 
I, Dude, I liked the- I liked the grimace hype. I know people were shitting on the it grimace hype and saying like that. That's why the Mets like w- didn't play well. It's like no, it's not. It's, it's not. Just, it, may- it was it was something for the fans that kept the fans engaged. Brom did. Yeah, no, it worked. It was fun. It worked. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a seat. He has it's his own fun. freaking did seat. Yeah. yeah. Surprise me. Like I, I feel know. like that's that's why I like I like Jazz Chisholm, whatever the hell is Jazz name Chisholm, is. yeah, because he Jazz him, he adds some personality, flair. And flavor, and some spice, flair. and some flair. Yeah. To an to a stuck and uptight Yankees clean shaven franchise. Yeah, no, I I thought Jazz played wonderful in the, in the playoffs, but I think we're getting off time. He didn't, but he defensively, he, well, he didn't. But I no. liked him offensively when he was you know getting on base and stuff. He's he almost won game one for us. Stolen bases. He almost won yeah. game one for yeah, us single handedly. So he had a, he had a few clutch stolen bases, yeah. and then his defense was flashy at times, but at the fundamentals, the Yankees lost because of fundamentals. Yeah. So. Great arm for a third baseman. I was like, holy crap, he's strong. But, well, he's not. He was not. Yeah, I was like, so. Jesus, he's strong. <laughs> he's strong yeah. arm. <laughs> yeah, dude. Crazy. <laughs> anyway, we can talk about this all day, but K has to get out of here at some point and whatnot. But we got to get on the yeah. show on the road. So, Will, Tarasuk, if you, if you may, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 393, OG Usi, because what's old is new again. We got the OG bloodline. The Hurt Business is now a syndicate in AEW. And oh yeah, WWE is going back to the indies in such a weird way. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Kings of the Rings podcast. Uh, you can find me on Ambassador Biggs. Sorry, you can find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast. Anywho, find me on Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media outlets like share subscribe leave us five star reviews the links are in the description below if you are listening to us make sure you listen to us on wrestle addict radio the cure for the common wrestling podcast and follow wrestle addict radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on twitter hopefully not for long and at wrestle addict radio all one word everywhere else will tear shock uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, it's me, it's Whitley T. T is in Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. Days since last instant should be zero, because I fucking had one just a few hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> With this goddamn, my audio sign like bender on a bender. Oh, no, it's still going to so, go up, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, great. So, you know, I tried. Um, anything to find me? Um, Google Off the Shelf Media is my friend Nash, who is trying to do like a video game media tycoon industry thing. Oh, he's trying to find YouTube. IGN. Yeah, so yeah, fun. pretty much. Okay. So it's a lot of fun. You know, I've, I've been writing articles about game of PS2 reviews. Nice. I did I did the first three Harry Potter games nice. and Quidditch World Cup. Um, and then I've been doing a video series on Age of Mythology Titan campaign, campaign Titan difficulty. Okay. So okay. That's, that's been fun. <laughs> that's been fun. So make sure you go subscribe to them off the shelf media. Kay Murphy. Hello. Um, I have nothing to plug because... I have to go to work. <laughs> you can find me across some social media at K A E underscore F A B E. That's Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. Yeah, I got. I gotta go. Yes, you do. That's and really apparently, it. we'll Bye. talk to Zaquan on the side. He wants to get in on that. So. You may have another. Okay. You may have another venture in that. When we come back, uh, whenever we come back, uh, hopefully this bloodline. Th- yes, yeah, Taquan, message me on Discord. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll connect. Yeah, you. when we come back, whenever we come back, hopefully this bloodline thing will be resolved. Hopefully MVP has brought more people into the Hurt Syndicate, and hopefully we get more cold brew cappuccino Jones because that sounds absolutely amazing. So until next time, folks. Goodbye. Good night. We'll see you soon. And fuck you, Slack. Later, folks. You fucker. (laughs) Fucker. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.